started. Um, again, if you have um, any people that aren't on here, we record it. So we'll get the recording out after this. And as usual, I am so excited um, every week for this call because if you guys are new and you're just joining us, we do this every week. So this link, save it in your phone, set an alarm with the time because every single week we interview a different 200K in the company and it is insane how many 200Ks our company has. That's a good thing, guys. It means that you can get to the top of this comp plan. I was just telling somebody the other day how I came from a company where there were less than 100 people that I had ever reached in 20 years, the top of that comp plan. And now I'm with a company that in two years, I've only repeated a couple of people, I think on this call. So it's so crazy. Like we have multiple 200 Ks and it would probably take me a whole year, um, two, three, four years just to get everyone in. And you know what else I love about this company? And I was saying the same thing, the conversation I was having was, it's just so refreshing to be part of a company that when you ask somebody if they'll do something like this, they say yes. And it doesn't matter to them whether they're profiting from it or not. Um, when you come from a company where everybody was like, nope, if I'm not making money off of you, then I'm not helping. And it's just so amazing that everybody in Lavelle is just so gracious. There's never been a 200K that I've asked that said no. And today's guest is no exception. I am super excited to have Leanne Monag Monag is it Monaghan? Am I saying it right, Leanne? Monaghan, the G is Monaghan. Okay. See, I botch it. That's like my, my MO. <laughs> you can give me the easiest name and I will mess it up. I will try to say it differently. Um, it's in my DNA or something. I don't get it. But I am so excited to have you on today and for you to share your story and your tips. And I kind of want to jump right in. And I want to start, like, I kind of want to know what were you doing before network marketing? Like, what was your, what was your gig? And then how did you find network marketing? Is Lavelle your first company? And then how did you find Lavelle? And then we'll kind of go from there. So in 2016, I was in banking. I was a teller supervisor. I worked for a bank that is open seven days a week. They open earlier than surrounding banks around them and they stay open later. And when I started there, I started part-time and I was just working the weekend. I wanted to go to school for event planning. And so I went back to college for a little while and then I remembered why I never finished college the first time. And it's because <laughs> I don't like school. I didn't like it. Um, so I decided to go full-time at the bank. And I remember when I started there, I set myself a goal that I wanted to be a teller supervisor. The tellers that work for um, the bank that I was with are very hands-on in the workings behind the scenes of why the bank runs the way that it works. So that was my goal. I wanted to be the teller supervisor within five Five years and I started to follow the teller supervisor around a whole lot and started to pay attention to what she was doing and ask if I could help can I learn what you're working on can I learn this can I learn that and um, then I switched switched branches and I got the teller supervisor job and I did that in about two years of being with the bank and I loved my job. I loved it, loved it, loved it until I didn't anymore. Until I found out that the supervisor side of it meant when people didn't show up, you had to stay late or come in early or come in on your day off. And if somebody decided that they were going to quit, then you had to cover for them until you hired somebody new. And I had to do all the icky sides of the job. And I, I used to drive to work and I would think that if I got in a small fender bender, I don't have to go to work for the day. And it never dawned on me that like, that's not a good way to live. Like you shouldn't be getting up in the morning and trying to figure out ways that you can get out of work that aren't technically your fault. And so I would sit down with some of my girlfriends and we would think all the time, like, you know, we're not, we're not dumb girls. We're not idiots. We should be able to find something that we love to do that could bring in an income at the same time. And it was literally a dream. It wasn't something that we were actively looking for or we were, you know, searching for. I didn't even think that it was possible. It was a dream, like those dreams that, that you would never think would come true. And so I continued to, you know, drag my butt to the bank. I would 
go to bed exhausted, stressing about getting up the next day. I would wake up exhausted, stressing about my day. And I would repeat that process all the time, living on coffee and energy drinks and wine. And I have two young kids. When I started um, back in 2016, I had a two and a four year old and they're, they're mama's boys. Like they need me. They still do. They, but they needed me a whole lot more back then. Like they were very needy and very high energy kids. And so I, I lived on sources of caffeine and I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it because everything is so like being tired is okay. Like it's glorified. If you're a mom, you're supposed to be tired. You're supposed to sleep when your kids sleep. And so I really never looked for anything until my girlfriend that I would sit down with and we would, you know, try to think of things that we could do and, you know, dream about those things until she started thriving. And I'm that person that like you dread in your business. I'm that person that if you mention thrive to, or I was, I'm not anymore. I can't say I am anymore, but I was that person who, um, when she brought it up, I literally like, I probably stopped dead in my tracks, pointed with my finger. And I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. First of all, you don't get all that from vitamins. It's not even possible. And second of all, direct sales and network marketing is not a thing. Like nobody is successful with that. I had never met anyone that drove a pink Cadillac. I never knew anyone that sold food storage items and got to quit their job. I never knew anyone that sold jewelry and, go, and got to quit their job. So I was like, this, it's not even a thing. And I laughed it off and I called one of our other best friends and we laughed about it together. I was like, you're not even going to believe what she's doing. This is the dumbest thing I ever heard of. And secretly I was like, but what if it works? What if it, what if it does do something for her? And so I remember we met at the dining room table and the, I see a couple of familiar faces on here. You guys will all laugh because we talk about the dining room table all the time. And it was always the agreement. Whoever got off work first had to stop for the cheap gas station wine. And so this particular Friday, um, I grabbed extra wine because it was that kind of week. And we met at the gas station table, me and my, or the gas station table, the dining room table, me and my girlfriend. And I was like, you're not going to believe my coworkers did this. My kids have done that. My, my job is ridiculous. Like I can't stand it. I hate it. And I just kept complaining and I kept pouring those glasses of wine. And she was just sitting there like, mm -hmm, uh-huh. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what's like, what's the deal? Like you quit your job, you fired your boss, you, you kicked your kid out. Like, why are you not, you know, tit for tat complaining with me? And she's like, those things that you're complaining about, this thing you laughed about is helping with all of the things you're tired. It will help. You have no patience. It will help you. You know, you're this and that hurts. It will help. And I'm like, it can't. But at that point, like I literally couldn't get any more mean and I couldn't get any more grumpy and I couldn't get any more tired. And I was like, okay, let me do this thing. So that's really how I, and I don't even say I found thrive because I definitely wasn't looking. I thought it was silly, but that's how, that's how Thrive found me. And I, I have never been in a network marketing company before. I had never done direct sales. My mom did a couple of things when I was younger and all it did was take her out of the house more. So instead of getting that time freedom that you think you're going to get with this, instead of getting that extra income, she was spending more than she was bringing in. She was gone more than, you know, her regular nine to five job that she was working. And so she never really stuck with any of those things. So I never saw anyone successful with network marketing but I saw how great Thrive was doing for my friend and I saw how good I was feeling when I started thriving. So that's how that found me. That's how the Thrive experience found me. I think I answered, I think I You did. It. And you know, it's so crazy because there's so many people in our lives that I did. I thought the same thing you did. I was like, those are pyramid schemes. People don't make money. I don't know anybody that is successful at this. Like I wasn't, there's so many people right now on our radar that don't even realize that this is going to be that thing that changes their life. And, and they just have to be open to it. They just have to be ready to listen. And that's why you have to keep opening your mouth. You know, you have to share it. Even if somebody's putting you down or telling you you're silly, you've got to share it because they're thinking just like you were, I was doing the same thing when my girlfriend introduced my first company to me, I was, you know, putting it down. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what if, like I was watching, I was like, what if, like, you know, maybe this isn't as stupid as I'm thinking it is. So when you came in, did you like just hit the ground running? Did you grab your VIP bonuses? Did you go 4k in 30 days? Give me your timelines of like in between each rank about how long it took to go 200k. 
So I actually came in as a customer and I was like, I'm, I'm not telling anybody. I, I just need to feel better. I'm not going to tell people I'm not sharing this. And I still like had that whole, like real people don't make real money with this. Like it's not really a thing. So I came in as a customer and, and I told her, don't even try. I'm not talking to anybody else. I'm not, I don't promote things. That's not what I do. So don't even try. And then people at work started to notice and they started to ask like, why are you so much nicer? Like you actually waved at me with your whole hand today when you walked in the building instead of like one particular finger and you know, what's changing. And I, I wasn't late every day with a giant coffee in my hand. Like the drive through was long. It's not my fault. Um, so I was, I was showing up on time. I was smiling. I was nicer. And apparently people noticed those things. So I must've been real nasty <laughs> before thrive and thrive help with that. So, um, I was telling Shereen, that's the, that's the person that got me started. Like, you know, people are noticing, this is so weird. Like, I can't even believe it. I have, you know, my DFT is hidden. So nobody knows what I'm doing. And they're, they're asking me why I'm nicer. And she was like, well, if you can help a couple of your coworkers be nicer too, you can get your product for free. And so I was like, well, shoot, free is my favorite cost. I basically go to work to pay for daycare so I can go to work so I can pay for daycare. And it's the cycle of I'm working my butt off and I'm not, I don't have anything to show for it except someone else is raising my kids. So free is like my favorite thing. And so I, I was like, well, I'm still not doing that promoting thing, but I'll get my products for free. So you guys know customers and promoters can get their product for free. And then I had a third person that was like, whatever you're doing, I need to do it because you're nicer, you smile more, you're losing some weight. I started to shed some pounds pretty quickly in the beginning because my food choices were changing. And so I called her and I'm like, don't get crazy, but somebody else wants to order. Like, what does that get me? And she was like, I'm on my way to your house. We're hitting that promoter button. You can tell me you don't want to do it all day long, but you're already doing it. So why not make some gas money? And so, um, Late June of 2016, I hit the promoter button and automatically I had that person order. So I saw those, they were bars back then. They started to fill up and I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like I'm very checklist mentality. So I'm like, what's it going to take to close these bars? And so I did start to talk to some people. I came in, I hit VIP 800 and I remember that little chunk of money that I got in my paycheck or in my bank account was bigger than what I would bring home from the bank in two weeks after I paid for daycare and 401k and a family of four of insurance. And I was like, I'm nicer. I'm smiling. I feel great. And I just need more money than I make at my job that I don't even like anymore. Like this is insane. Maybe I should start sharing. Maybe I should start telling more people. Maybe I should act, like put it out there so people can see it. And so VIP 800 is really what turned the page for me that I was like, this is real. It's actual money that I could take out and go pay things off with. So that's what did it for me. And then I missed VIP 1600. I couldn't get that last promoter. You guys know when you first come in, those promoters are hard getting people. And I was that person. So I know, um, getting people to come in and just want to hit the ground running is, is hard when they're coming, you know, hearing it from a skeptic. So I get that. I missed VIP 1600 but I did hit 4K in 30 days. So July 15th, we hit 4K. Back then it was that iPad mini bonus. Um, hit that and I was like, this is kind of incredible. Kind of incredible. And so I had, of course, my best friend started with me. So I was like, how do we do this for you guys? You guys can make this money too. Let's, let's hit your VIP bonuses and let's hit your you know, 4K iPad mini bonus. And so two weeks after hitting 4K, we hit 12K and I remember I was at work and I was literally like, I should, I should quit my job. I think I can really do this. But it, there wasn't, you know, nothing, no income had been replaced at that point yet. So um, that was still kind of a dream out there. But I remember I was at work and um, I got a message from Kristen Gonzalez. She's one of my uplines also. And she said, Dana Chuba and I want to call you. Is that okay? And I'm like, this is it. I knew it was too good to be true. I've done something wrong. I've made somebody mad. Now I'm in trouble. And so they called me at work and I remember, um, Kristen introduced herself. We hadn't even really spoken yet. And then she put Dana on the phone and Dana's like, did you just hit, um, an auto bonus? I'm like, yeah, I don't even really know what it means. And she's like, well, don't post about it unless you're going to go get an auto bonus car. And I was like, okay, like, like what? She's like, I don't know. I have a Mercedes. You should get a Mercedes. And I was like, 
okay, if, you know, I, I had seen who she was on Facebook and she was successful and Kristen was successful. And I'm like, if these successful people are telling me I should go do this, I should probably go and do it. And so I remember I left work that day and I, I got home and I told my husband, like, Kristen Gonzalez, Dana Chuba called and they told me that I needed to go get a Mercedes. And he's like, I don't even know who those people are. He's like, but I've seen something in you that I've never seen before the whole time we've been together. And if you honestly believe in this company and you honestly believe in yourself, let's go do that. And it literally like floored me because I had just begged and begged and begged for a Tahoe and I had it for seven months and I didn't think he was going to be that willing to just go get rid of it and get something else. But within um, like 35 days of hitting the promoter button, I had a car in my driveway that I could not afford without that Lavelle auto bonus. So I remember I would sit in my garage with the garage door open and I would look at the front of that car and I'd be like, who am I going to message today? Who am I going to reach out to today? Who needs the Thrive experience like worse than anything in the whole wide world? And I would sit there and I would look at that car like, if you don't make that call and you don't send that message, you won't keep that car. And so um, 12K, was that was good. I wanted to help my friends do the same thing too. So then November, we just kept going. I was helping my friends do that. I think we had three auto bonus earners by November and we hit the 40K rank. And I was like, well, this is just it. We're just rocking and rolling. I guess next month is 80K. And right after that, we're going to be the top rank of the company. But as you guys all know, it doesn't quite go that way. So if you want me to just keep going, Lisa, I will just keep going. Or you can stop. No, no, keep going. Because I want to hear like how long it took you to actually like, because I mean, a lot of people, they come in and one of two things happens. There's only one of two things. They either don't take off at all right away. And they're kind of like, what's going on? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Or they take off and then they hit a wall. Because I tell everybody this, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you come in and go straight to 200K. At some point you are going to hit a wall. Everyone does. Some people hit it sooner than later. And I feel like that's when you really figure out what people are made of. Because I've watched people fly to 200K and as soon as they hit that wall, they're no longer with this company. So it's hitting the wall that shows this is who I am. And I love it when people hit the wall. They don't, but I love it when they hit the wall right away and push through it because that's what they're made of. They're not quitting. They get it and they're going to stick with it. And so it sounds like you maybe hit your wall at 40K. So that was going to be next. You're absolutely correct. So right at the month after I hit 40K, Lavelle dropped the first rank advancement bonus second rank advancement bonus since I started the company. Um, we hit one when I hit 12K and then we hit one on my husband's account when he hit 12K. And it was just, it just kept, kept going. And I'm like, okay, next up is this, next up is that. Then I hit 40K and the month after that, they released a rank advancement bonus. And I remember being like, man, I just wouldn't have pushed so hard to hit that rank last month. And then I literally like beat myself up for even thinking that. And I was like, we're just gonna hit 80K next month. It'll be fine. Like we'll make that next bonus. Um, and then December came and December came and brought a wall and I hit it. And I was like, well, what am I not doing now that I was doing in the beginning? And then January came and we were still hitting that wall. And I think it's like that moment in January, I think it was January, 2017 that I had like that talk in the mirror with myself. Like, do you even know how you got to 4k, 12k, 40k? And it was I didn't know. I didn't have a system. I wasn't organized. I wasn't teaching my team the things that I was doing because I had no idea. You guys hear Maria say all the time, like ignorance on fire. That's literally what it was. And I feel like the universe said, slow down, sister. You're not ready to lead a team that big. Like you're not ready to do that. You need to go back to the very bottom. You need to figure out exactly what it takes to hit VIP 800 without just spewing thrive all over the place. Because that's all I knew to do. I was so excited. I was so happy. Not that that's a bad thing that you're sharing thrive all over, but I didn't have a lot of people that were sticking around. I wasn't introducing them to the community. I wasn't bringing them in because I didn't know, I didn't know any better. I didn't have any clue what I was doing. I was literally ignorance on fire. And so once I got in with the team, we started, um, doing calls. We started getting together and doing promoter meetups. I don't even think like Zoom was a big thing then. We started doing promoter meetings and just really digging into the basics to customers, to promoters over and over and over again. 
getting them introduced to other people that are thriving is huge. Having that community sense is so big. And I think all of you guys with what the world's going through now understand that bigger than anything in the whole world. So until I stopped and figured out what exactly was bringing in volume and what was working and what wasn't working and kind of having that like humbling moment where I realized I didn't have any freaking clue what I was doing. I needed to go back and figure out what was working and what wasn't working. And I needed to help create a process that was following the funnel of creating that customer account, getting them on the fan page, introducing them to other thrivers so that they could hear other stories um, and hitting those VIP bonuses with my team. Then I wasn't like, I couldn't grow from there. So once we did that, we did good. We did hit 80K in April of 2017 and got that rank advancement bonus. Um, and then that's kind of the moment where I was like, I think I'm just going to do this full time forever. And I left, I was home full time, kept my kids home full time. And I told my husband that I wanted him to be home, home full time as well. So I put that on my vision board and vision boards are huge too guys if you guys don't have your goals in front of you like it's so easy to stray away if you have no idea where you're going so put those in front of you so i had that up there that i wanted my husband to quit i tried to get him to quit when i hit that 80k rank advancement bonus and he was still like mm, i don't think i don't think we're ready for that yet girl so um we kept going but after 80k we hit another wall we had a i I, honestly, I had probably like the most perfect balanced legs that you could have ever seen. I had my best friend on one side, my husband's team on the other side that I was working to build, and they would literally be hundreds of dollars apart from each other, like the most perfect legs ever. And then we lost an entire team. We lost an entire 40K leg under my best friend, and it was crippling to her. It was very hard for her. It was very hard for me um, because the the, the people that we lost, we had such like faith in, we had such belief in, and that's one of the hardest things in this business is believing more in somebody than they believe in themselves and having them go away and that whole thing go. And so we got to a place where we were very unbalanced and that was hard for me as well, where I'm like, okay, we're still doing all the things, but things aren't panning out and things aren't balancing. And what do we have to do? And it's those walls that remind you you have to go back to basics. You have to sit back, you have to look in the mirror and you have to remind yourself exactly what you're doing. You have to remember to lead with the products. You have to share those stories. You have to get people connected with other people so that they can hear other stories. Um, there's so many different stories with Thrive and I'm like bouncing all over the place, but there's so many different stories with Thrive that if, if I was only telling my network my story, I would only get tired moms that are addicted to caffeine drinks. And I wouldn't get the people that need mental clarity because I never talk about that because it's not clear up there. Um, it's, I wouldn't talk about joint support and I wouldn't talk about a bunch of those other things and I would lose a whole lot of people. So getting other stories in front of other people is so, so, so important. So I think those walls happen every time the universe is like, wait a minute, you've got to back up and you've got to bring it back to basics. So we sat at 80 K we dropped down we dropped down at one point. I don't even have the date in front of me. We dropped down at one point. We lost rank. I want to say it was December or January. And I'll come back to these months again in a second that we went back down to 40 K and I had a tough love talk with myself in the mirror. Like it was January. It was January of 2018. Like you can't quit. You've already poured so much into this. You love the products. You love the company. You love your team. You just have to keep going and you have to find more people that need thrive. So January of 20, 2018, we, we dropped back down to 40 K had that tough love talk with myself in the mirror, got back to basics. And then April of, um, 2018, we hit 200 K. So we went 40 K, 80 K, 200 K in four months then. And so, um, there was a pretty big bonus that was being offered at that time, which I had to rebuild to, 80k to get that bonus. I had to build a new leg to 80k to hit that bonus. And we got that bonus. And then I went 200k with that leg also and hit that bigger bonus. And then my husband was like, okay, I'll come home now. And so we've been home full time since May of 2018 as a full time family because of everything that Lavelle is. But I think that we get in a place. And if I look at my rank report, Every single time that we ever dropped down or we got low, it was November, December, January. And I let myself get in that mindset of 
people don't grow in these months because it's holiday months. People don't do this because they're Christmas shopping or they're doing that. But I want to remind you guys that the tired mom that needs this doesn't know that we feel like that that's a slow time in our business. And the guy who wants to run again and his knees hurt, he doesn't know that we think it's a slow time. So please don't ever think that there's seasons in this company. There are seasons in us. There are seasons in the way that we think with this business. Those people that are desperate for Thrive doesn't know, they don't know that we think this is a slow time or they think that that's a slow time or Christmas time or anything. So um, I won't ever in 2019, we had some of our biggest months in those months because I wouldn't ever let myself fall back into that mindset of it's okay that we're having slower months because in network marketing, people think these are slower months. So I didn't let myself be okay with that. And then coming into where we are in the world now, I remember when all of this started thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be, this is going to be crazy. People aren't going to spend money. They're going to be out of work. They're going to be doing that. And then I remembered that we lead with the products and what the products could do. And if we're in a time where people's immune systems need more help than ever, we need to show up with that solution for those people more than ever and not in a spammy buy my vitamins kind of way, but offering a solution to all of those things. So in these last four or five months that we have been home and we've been battling the whole rest of the world, we've had our biggest months ever. We have grown more. We have brought more people in than I ever, ever thought possible. So I think I got through. My you know, mind. I got to tell you, you hit a lot of things just in your you know, just getting to 200K that a lot of people right on this Zoom right now are struggling with. They may have lost rank. I know a lot of people that have red legs, you know, a power leg. Um, and and the, at the end of the day, we all hit these things, every single one of us, you know, even if you, you know, I always tell people, I do think that people think if you're 200K, it's just easy at that point. And to me, that's when it gets hard because you're pretty much out of your dang network. You know, that's where you got to like, go find new people. It's not like people are knocking at your front door every day saying, Hey, you're 200 K. I want to sign with you. Like, it, and you still have those things where in fact, more things happen because the more people that you have on your team, the more relationships you build, the more people end up leaving or, you know, the more likely you are to get red legged or the more likely you are to, maybe fall out of rank or lose volume, all those things happen or miss bonuses. And, and you shared a lot of your struggles, but since going 200K, have you hit any walls or had any struggles that you kind of were like, okay, is this, what is happening? Or am I ever going to get through this? I think that, I don't think we're ever going to stop hitting walls or we're ever going to stop hitting moments where we're like, can I still do this? Um, right now I'm, I'm struggling huge right now with balance and not so much balancing legs or balancing. Um, I guess it's just time, like balancing time. I have my kids home and we're doing homeschooling and I am having internal struggles with myself. Am I failing my kids? Am I teaching them the way teachers would teach them? Um, I'm sometimes doubting the strength of my black label every now and again when it comes to that patience, but I swear kids can push your buttons like nobody in this whole wide world. Um, and then it's that struggle of like, I, I do all of this so that I can be home with them so much. And now that they're home so much, I'm like, can they go back to school? They need to go back to school. They need to go back to school. But I think it's for the good of the group. Like absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? We're going to learn that soon lesson in this house when they do go back to school. But I'm struggling with that. Um, I will say that with balance, I'm also struggling. My husband's leg is my strongest leg. We tend to pull it out by the end of the month and we get, you know, we get back to where we need to be. But um, right now we're, we're well over 200 in volume, but we're sitting at 80K rank because I've got to pull that balance out. And it's, it's my husband's leg that's balancing me or that's got me out of balance. And that's the leg that I'm building that I've been working so hard to build, um, for so long. And then, you know, we just, we can't forget about those other legs. We just got to keep building them. We got to keep adding them and, you know, bringing in those new people. So I will say that one of the biggest struggles is falling into management mode when you would at any rank really, but I think it happens a lot at 200 K because a lot of people, um, 
I don't want to say need a lot from you, but a lot of people want a lot from you. They, they want to know what, what are you doing that I could be doing differently? And you fall into management mode. So one thing that I try to work really hard on is making sure that I always end the month with at least 4k in personal volume in my customer volume, my own orders, that volume right there. Can you guys imagine what your team would look like if every single promoter worked to have just 4k in personal volume, if they were always working their personal business? Um, you, if we would all have like really big teams if all of our people were working to do that. So I think one of the biggest struggles is falling into management mode. Um, another thing that I struggle with is wanting to be everything for everyone, wanting to answer all of those questions right away and wanting to answer those questions for everybody and wanting to be on every single one of those Zooms that I can possibly be on and wanting to be in every little celebration with everybody and wanting to be, but I think that that comes with passion. So um, wanting to be everything for everyone is very hard for me not to be. And I have to let like the control freak in me has to let that go sometimes and help create a duplicatable system that my that my team can do with their team. So I feel like I touched on a whole bunch of different. No, you did. And you know what? You are so right. Like usually when somebody hits a wall, I love like this whole conversation. You've talked many times about looking in the mirror and having to get real with yourself because when we hit walls, it absolutely has to do with us. Like it's easy to go blame your team. Well, my team isn't working and doing what they were doing before, or, you know, my upline isn't helping me. And, you know, I message her and she doesn't get back with me. Like the million things that we tell ourselves on why we're kind of stuck or falling backwards, but the real reason we're stuck and falling backwards is ourselves. Like you have to go back to doing what you do. Like don't count on anyone else to build your business for you. Like, I go into every single day as if no one under me is working. Like I'm solely responsible for bringing in next week's paycheck. And if you have that mental attitude, you're going to make sure you keep doing the do, right? Instead of like getting so focused and falling into management mode, which is so easy. Like, and it doesn't take to get to 200K to fall into management mode. I watch people go to 4K and all of a sudden they start managing or 12K or 40K. And it's usually why they're stuck because they're so getting up every day and worried about what their downline's doing. And then they get to the end of the month, month and it's like, what's their PPA? You know, how much volume did they bring in? And I love how you have that mentality of, I want to bring in 4K volume every month. I mean, that is ensuring that you yourself are working. And if you work, you know, people follow the leader, they follow suit and people aren't stupid. They know if you're like, they know if you're sitting around collecting a paycheck or if you're actually doing, doing your business, doing what you're supposed to do. How do you continue? Cause I'm pretty sure, I mean, you've been in how, what year is this for you? How long have you been in? June was four yeah. years. We're going on four years. <laughs> oh, hold on, let me mute out. Hold on a second. Um, so in four years, I'm pretty sure that probably most likely, you know, your immediate friends that were going to join you and immediate family, if they were going to do that, what they would have done it. <laughs> so how do you personally continue to build your network and like get new people added to social media and stuff like that? Well, luckily those kids that I talk so highly of, <laughs> They like to play a lot of sports. So I do meet a lot of people, a lot of parents when it comes to sports and stuff like that, when I'm meeting new kids. And last year when kids were in school, I joined the PTA. I found out that I'm not a very good PTA mom, but I did meet some new people that way. Um, adding people on social media is also huge. You have to find your niche. You have to find things that you can offer value in. So I'm a baseball mom. I'm a boy mom. I'm just starting into some golf, I'm learning some golf lessons. So I joined some golf groups. And when you first get in and you're doing something new and you're finding a niche, um, and you get in these groups and you go in there, you have to be, of course you have to be present and you have to be active, but go in there and ask for advice, ask for things like, you know, how do I do X, Y, Z? Or if you're, um, you know, maybe you're starting a new hobby, like get in a group and ask things like that. Because at some point, those people that are answering your questions, you're going to be answering for somebody else and you're going to be able to offer value when you get farther down the road. So, you know, adding groups is always really huge. It's hard to get out and meet a lot of people right now because of everything that's going on, but, but meeting new people and then using your network's network, helping your people do exactly what you've done 
is huge. If I, you know, wasn't encouraging my customers to share and post, I would never be touching their networks and then so on down the line. So, um, I do have quite a few people that still like and follow that have been watching me since the very beginning that haven't jumped on board yet. And I honestly think that it's totally in their mind. Like it's totally mindset. If, you know, Shereen would have pushed me harder in the very beginning when I was laughing and being mean, I probably would have backed out before I ever got started. So you always have to let them do it in their time and love them where they are while also always finding that new and adding that new. So um, groups have been super helpful lately, especially because so many people are home and I think they're looking for things to do. So that's, that's been a really good way of building my network. And then I'm trying to learn Instagram, but I'm like, Instagram. I'm with you. Yeah. Me and Instagram are like, I just actually started this like last couple months and it's like, I know there's a whole new network on there, but you know, change is like scary for everybody. I don't care who you are. And I'm like loving my Facebook. Like I don't like change. I remember when uh, they got rid of my space. I was like, why are they doing this to me? You're ruining my life. <laughs> and I, and I didn't know how to do Facebook. So it's just transitioning over. And as a leader, I mean, you constantly have to be opening to doing, trying new things and doing things differently. And like, what, are you a huge, like third party credibility, like, um, your team in general, do they do a lot of three-way messages or calls or anything like that? Oh, some people are going to not be happy with this, but I am not a big three-way phone call kind of person. Um, I do honestly believe in that third party validation, but I also, um, think that we are in a world of messaging and messenger and texting and letting kind of people, and I don't want to say letting them do it on their own time, but letting people do it on their own time and find out their own, the, their own way of finding that validation. And so we have a, we have a group that has a ton of customers. It's very customer driven and they get in there and they do a lot of lives and they post a lot about their stories. And so my process, when I have somebody and I do my posts, I don't put a whole lot of, um, I don't put any ads on my Facebook page. I do a lot of my own story. I make sure my DFT is showing. I will give thrive credit where, you know, credit is due. I think I did a post this morning because it's national ice cream cone day. And so I had my recover that's ice cream, vanilla ice cream flavor in there. Um, and I had somebody message me and be like, what is this about? And the first thing I do is I grab their email address so I can set up their profile. I never call it an account. I feel like people hear the word account and they're like, what? I have to spend money. So I call it a profile. And then I tell them that I'm going to add them to our fun group. And then I throw them in this private group and I tag them in my story. Unless I know exactly whose story is going to touch them in that group, I will tag them in my own. And then we've got that first, like, what is Thrive video that pops up when somebody creates a new account? We have that pinned at the top. So I tag them in those things. And I kid you not, nine times out of 10, when I throw somebody in there, they see something in there that offers value to them and they see why they need the product because not all the time do you know why people need the product. You don't always know their whole story and what they're looking for, but when they get in there and they start looking at videos, because people are nosy. So they go in there and start exploring. They see something in there that sparks their attention. And before I can even follow up with them, Hey, did you like that video? What did you think of my story? They're messaging me and they're like, I just saw this guy on there who lost 35 pounds and his knees don't ache anymore and he's running again and that's what I need. And I'm like, oh, I know exactly whose story that is. Let's grab him and he can tell it to you. So I let them find their validation before I bring in that other person. Does that make sense? No, no, totally. And I agree with you. I mean, I it's very rarely I do calls anymore. Most things are messages and stuff like that. And actually somebody shared um, on another call, I can't remember who it was, but they said they actually um, have people save voice messages that they just take the voice message and they don't even do three way chats. They'll just take somebody's story and throw it in their message and say, listen to this really quick so that they don't have to bug anybody. I thought that was a cool idea, but I love when you said profile. I am one of those people that verbiage is everything verbiage, how you talk to people is everything. And one little thing can scare them off, like account, like auto ship, like those words that scare people away. 
so if you can use different verbiage, I think it is so good. And that is like, I wrote that down that you said profile, because it's just one little thing like that, that can change everything. One little thing that you're saying to somebody can totally, and I'm telling you guys one word, like when I stopped using auto ship, like immediately things turned around for me. So using things like when people get scared, will you create a free account? Account sounds like money ordering. That means I'm locked into something where profile sounds like none of that. So I love that. That was like such a golden nugget. Um, so when you bring in a new promoter, let's say like I'm in your inbox today and I'm all like, Leanne, I'm, I'm ready to do this thing. Let's go. How, what do you do? Like how, what are you doing to walk somebody through the process of like signing up and guiding them to hopefully get their VIP bonuses? Because you and I both know VIP bonuses are not easy to get. I know everybody thinks that everyone, you know, oh my gosh, if I didn't get my VIP bonuses, that means I suck at this. People don't realize that it's like one out of every 10, 15 promoters that you bring in, get their VIP bonuses. That's just the real deal, guys. It's not easy for somebody that's brand new, that's never done this before, that has no market set up yet, that doesn't know what to say, to go find two customers and two promoters. It sounds easy, but it's not as easy as it sounds. So what do you kind of do? I mean, I just kind of like to hear what every 200K does, because you might do a little something different than I do that might make a difference. So the second somebody says the word promoter, if they haven't hit the button yet, then I don't let them. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. We're going to chat first. We're going to get on a Zoom. I want to talk face to face because I think if you're looking at somebody's face, you can get a whole lot more out of them. You know that they're listening. You know that they're engaged, that, they're, that they want to learn. They want to do these things. And so I will get them on a Zoom. I will have somebody else on there who can talk about the VIP bonus. And it's our Zooms are super casual. It's never like pushy or crazy or weird. And most of the time, the person I will bring into the Zoom is the person whose story they saw that they have already talked to or they've already connected with because of the group. So it's not a stranger. It's not somebody that they have no connection with or no relationship with. Um, and so we get them on that and I start to walk them through, okay, this is what we're going to do for VIP. Oh, I'm sorry. Right before we do this, um, if they've already hit the button, then I, I have them added to my 200K page and we have a section that's for new promoters and it's got a Zoom video with me and I'm welcoming them to the team, to the family. I'm excited for them. I you know tell them I can't wait for what's going to happen. And then I have them tagged in the next video, which breaks down VIP 800. So if they can watch that before the Zoom, great. If not, we're going to break it down again anyway. So we get on that Zoom. They get to meet those people if they haven't met face to face yet. And then we really just break it down. Like, what are you, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for gas money? Because that's all I was looking for in the beginning. If somebody would have been like, you can get trips in a car and retire, I'd have been like, that's too much. That's not what I'm looking for. This is kind of freaking me out. So I try to figure out what they're looking for before we go into anything crazy. And then we just really break down VIP 800 bonus to them. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Two customers who place their order using our super simple auto ship feature. Then we need two promoters who come in and all they're going to order is how much product they want to start with. The 200 pack is good for one person, 400 pack is good for, you know, one person. Plus if you have samples you want to bag up and you get some samples in the cloud and you get, you know, we go through all that with them. And then we really just try to set them up for success. We try to get them, you know, who are you already thinking of? I, I never really push anybody or encourage anybody to cold message or spam. I'm not like get in there and that, you know, message A to Z in your friends list. But I, I really want them to think about who Thrive can help. And if I can help somebody have those people kind of lined up before they hit the promoter button, that's always the goal. Because for me, I had, you know, I already was a customer and I had two people that were loving the, their experience. And those were the two people that ended up flipping to promoters. So they weren't brand new coming in. So that's kind of the ideal way. But of course you get those people who come in and they're like, all right, I'm ready right this second. I want to be a promoter. And so we just, we do the same process with them. We go through, we walk through it on the Zoom and then we have a VIP 800 chat set up. That's just them, the person that was on the Zoom. And then me, if it's the person I'm bringing in or, you know, it's a very small focused chat. So then I can always go through in my chats and be like, okay, who's in VIP? What do they need to do today? And we try to give them little daily 
go post about how you're feeling. I don't, I won't write a post for anybody because nobody's me and they couldn't write it the same as they would, or they wouldn't write it the same as I would. Right, right. And you know, and I always think about all of the people that could have been so successful with this that end up quitting when they don't get those bonuses. Like they, they really believe, and I think it's our fault because we put so much pressure on it sometimes that if they don't hit those bonuses, they quit. And I always think in my mind, where could that person have been in five years if they just would have stuck with us? We would have so many more 80Ks and 200Ks in our business that they just would have understood that that doesn't make or break your business. You know, if you guys are on here today and you're newer, just know that if you didn't get those bonuses or you don't get them, that does not dictate your future success with Lavelle. The only thing that dictates your future success with Lavelle is you. The only way to not succeed is to quit. And I, I always tell people, the only people not winning, you know, every person that I know that's been with me in network marketing for five years or more, they're all making a significant amount of money that's making a difference in their life. All of them. The only people not are the ones that quit. I don't know where they are, you know, and it's sad because it's like, oh my gosh, where, what would this have done for someone's like life if they just would have treated it like a real business, knowing that it's going to take time to build. And again, we are going to hit walls continuously, but it's when you hit that first wall, it shows what you're made of. What are you going to do with this business? And, you know, I, from your story, you fit lots of walls. I've hit lots of walls. It's like, we've all hit them and it doesn't make us, you know, exempt from hitting walls. Once you hit the rank of 200 K, it gets even more, it gets even more crazy. So, you know, I, another thing I always ask on this, I try to ask a lot is because once you start to build a team, and especially since we're like 99% women in network marketing, there can be stuff like this person doesn't get along with this person and I don't want to make my upline any money. So I'm just not going to work. Like, you know, stupid statements like that always kill me. I'm like, really? <laughs> Come on. You're going to let someone else determine whether you succeed or not. You're not going to make someone else a paycheck. It's so silly. But there, there's conflict. There's just sometimes you sign somebody up and they don't get along with you. And I always tell people that we're so blessed to be in a business like this because there's several uplines. You know, if somebody doesn't like me or care for me or I'm not their cup of tea, guess what? There's other people they can go to. Um, and, you know, I feel like sometimes I'm spending most of my days putting out fires. It feels like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just spent like three days putting out fires or somebody doesn't like this person or that person or conflict. It just happens. And, you know, I always try to tell people, it doesn't matter whether you like someone or not. Most people are good people and most people deserve to see success in this company. And whether you would do it that way, or you don't get along with them, they still deserve it. You know, you still have to have a mutual respect. If you had a normal job, you would not be allowed to go into work and just talk nasty to your coworkers. You'd be fired. Like you wouldn't be able to ignore someone or not work with them because you didn't feel like it. You would be forced to because that's how you got paid. And it's no different here. What, you know, when you're dealing with like things like this on your team, like, do you have any tips or anything like that for people that maybe feel like, I don't know, I think one of my biggest things and I'm watching people do recently is isolating. Like they start isolating their team and they can be the only leader that, that I'm hearing from. And I don't want to expose anybody to anybody else. And it can just be such a trap. And I've watched so many businesses literally that were booming start to crumble because of that. Um, so what kind of things have you seen just over the last four years and any tips you have? I think that, I mean, you hit a lot of nails on a lot of heads there. <laughs> with all of that and having so many um, women and people in general. But I think like the biggest thing, and we learned this growing up is like, you gotta take care of your own little red wagon. Like you gotta take care of yourself. You've got to do self-development so that your mind is strong and you can let a lot of that stuff go. There's people on my team that they don't come to me for anything. They don't need me or use me or, you know, ask me for help with anything. They, they ask other uplines or they ask people above me or 
you know, side sisters next to them underneath me. And when you can build your mind strong, you can let those things go. And keeping people from other people is just doing your own business a disservice. If I kept all of my team from learning from Kristen or Heather or Shireen or, you know, anybody, if I kept them from learning from those people, I would never grow. My, my business would never grow because they would never have the opportunity to learn from people who have different mindsets than I do or have different ways of doing things. I think when you realize like your way of doing things is not the only way to do it. Yes, we've got a plan and a funnel, but you can change up the way you do things. And as times change, we have to be willing to change with those things. So I think that um, like taking care of, of yourself and your mind and your mental space is very important. And if there are people that are negative and they're, they're bringing negativity, it's very easy to block them out. You can block them on social media, you can get rid of them, but don't ever, um, isolate somebody so that they don't have a place that they can go to another leader. They can learn from another person. You're only going to shoot yourself in the foot. And you're right. If you, if I went to the bank and I had a coworker that I didn't particularly like, I would still have to show up and stand next to them every day and we would still have to do our dang job. So don't ever forget that you're still an adult and you have to act like an adult when it comes to this business. And, um, I, I don't do mean girls very well. I don't really like to, to leave people not included. So we do a lot of things together in our team, but there are people that don't, that aren't, you know, they're not my biggest fan and, and that's, that's okay. I think it's okay. Sorry. I think once you realize that it's okay for people to not, Jax, yes, of course, uh, it's okay for people to not love you all of the time as long as they have another leader that they can go to and you never leave them out because blowing out somebody else's flame doesn't make yours shine any brighter or saying that you're not going to make money for somebody, you only don't make money for yourself. If I'm making my... If I'm making my upline money, I'm still making myself money. Her pay doesn't come out of my pay. So why would I, why would I not still work to do this? And so you're right when you say like people do crumble and people do go away because they're like, I'm not going to make so-and-so money, but now you're only damaging yourself. You're only keeping yourself from making money and you're only keeping yourself from getting those blessings at the same time. So take care of your it's mindset. So true. Yeah, it's so true. if you can be, if you can mentally be strong, you can get past any of the negativity most of the time. Amen. And that brings me into really my last little question. You mentioned vision boards earlier and I can't, you know, I think it's honestly the biggest reason why so many people aren't seeing the success that they want to see. It's because they don't listen, you know, every week I do this call and every week a different 200 K comes on and every week 200 K say the same thing. They have different stories and they might get there a different way, but they all say the same things. And the one thing that every single 200 K says is you have to have a plan. There's nobody that just got to 200 K because they pray, wished for it. Like they, they actually had to know where they were going, take the time to do things. And I know some people think this stuff is silly. I get it. You might be thinking, okay, so you really want me to sit down and cut things out of magazines and paste it on a board and okay, that's for a two-year-old. Or, you know, until you kind of get out of your own way and get rid of the mindset that, you know, what we're saying is silly and just do it, that this could be the missing piece of the puzzle for you. But I think it's that People aren't on purpose about their business. You know, a, a day goes by, two, two, day, two days, three days. The next thing you know, a whole week goes by and you really didn't do anything for your business. And the biggest reason you didn't is because you didn't plan it. You didn't schedule it into your day. You weren't on purpose about, you know, making this a priority in your life. It has to be, you have to treat it like a business. If you don't, it's going to be a hobby. I mean, exactly, exactly what it will be. So I know vision board you said was important, but what do you do kind of to keep yourself on track? And then what are some self-development tips that you have for anybody on? So I was just in a chat earlier this morning and I was like, you guys, like you have to, you have to know where you're going and figure out how you're going to get there. Like you're not going to accidentally hit 4k. You're not going to accidentally 
hit 12K or accidentally earn a trip or a car or 200K. Like you have to have some kind of plan, but you also have to be flexible and be able to like roll with the punches with that plan. And the only way to do that is to know, and I don't want to say your end game because I had, when I started this business, um, I had a chalkboard wall. My whole, I took my kids' playroom over and I had a chalkboard wall and I wrote things on the wall that I wanted. My husband home full time, um, season passes to Disney. Uh, I think I had a couple other things up there and there's nothing like more encouraging or more pushing than if you put something on your vision board that your kids want. And then every day they're like, when are we going? When are we going to Disney? Like that will push you and drive you every single day. Um, but to know what you're working for and to know what your next goal is and how you're going to get there, you, it's so easy to fall off. If you're, if you're, if you don't have anything that you're working towards, why would you keep working? So you've got to put something up there. So I recently, we had a vision board party at the beginning of um, the month. We did a vision board party and we had magazines and we had ranks and we had all kinds of things. But on my vision board, not only do I put the things that I want to work for, but I have rank badges with names of people on my team that I want to help get to those ranks. So I feel like I would not only be letting my own vision sound, but I'd be letting the visions of my team. And my team turns into my family. And it's like you'd be letting your family down if you didn't help them get to those things. So um, having those visions is super important making a plan. We do 12 working Zooms every week. And on Sunday, it's planning the week. And we always look at the past week and what did you not accomplish? What did you not get done? And how are you going to roll it into your new week so that you can do it? And I will definitely get on people if I'm like, you've rolled that over 16 times. Like, let's just get it done. Let's get it out of the way. Let's figure it out. Um, but to, to be able to replan and to have a good plan in front of you is so important. My planner is on the dining room table where we were doing one lesson, so it's not right in front of me. But I try to plan out all of the things of my week, and I only do a week at a time with an end, you know, a goal in sight. But I try to do a week at a time and then reevaluate those things each week so that I can try to stay on track. And life happens. It happens for everybody. It's always going to happen. It's just how you are going to turn around and adapt to life that's going to set you apart from those other people. And, you know, you were saying earlier, like the, the only way to fail at this is to quit and to make excuses. Like you get rid of those two options. You take that failure off the table and you will get to those goals one way or another. It might not be today or tomorrow, but you will get there as long as you don't. Quit. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. Um, Leah, <laughs> your dog, because every single time I get on a zoom, my dogs decide that they want to come in and start barking every time, like 99% of the time. It's, I'm surprised they haven't done it today. Um, you know, every single tip you've given today, I hope everybody took good notes. I hope everybody paid attention because it's just some like one little thing to tweak in your business and it can change everything. And, you know, I don't know anybody that is just floating through this business. They have a plan you know, and don't compare, you know, your plan to someone else's plan. I think we do that so much where we're like, okay, if so-and-so is trying to go 12K, then I guess I should try to go 12K. That might not be your life right now. That might not be the time that you have or what you're able to put in. So set your own goals, make them achievable, you guys, but let them push you a little bit. And like you said, Leanne, you've got to take that option of quitting off the table. That's my biggest saying, take quitting off the table because if it's there and it's an option, you're always going to revert back to it. Anytime anything happens or you hit a wall, you're going to go, well, I could just quit. You know, that's, that's still there. That's still an option. And when it's no longer an option, you don't go there mentally. Where you go mentally is how do I get past this wall? What do I need to do to fix this so I can move forward? What do I need to be doing to change this situation? Not well, I'll just quit, or maybe I can go try something else. And uh, we're totally at 10 o'clock, but you know, it always blows my mind when people think that they're going to go to another company and they're going to see a different result. You take you with you. Like it, your bad habits are all the reasons you're stuck here. If you don't think you're going to go to another company and get stuck in that same exact spot, you're insane. You're going to. You're going to get stuck in that spot. And then you're going to be like the other 20 people on my team that have left and tried to come back after being through five companies because 
you realize how good you had it with Lavelle. You know, you just have to push through those walls. It's so huge. You guys, it's um, 10.01 my time, which means it's 101 Eastern and everybody just got paid. So happy payday to everybody. And Leanne, I always say we get paid twice every Tuesday because we get our paycheck, but we also get paid greatly through this Zoom because we have somebody that shared their heart and their passion and their tips. And that's even bigger than a paycheck because something you said today, I know somebody on this Zoom needed to hear what you had to say. And somebody on this Zoom was impacted in a way that it's going to change their mindset or their business. It happens every week. So I just appreciate you so much for taking the last hour out of your life to pour into all of us. And, um, you know, just grateful that we're part of a company that people don't care if they're making money off of you. They're like, no, I, I want to help everyone. And that's really the way it should be. So thank you so much, Leanne. I appreciate you. And um, I will get the recording out to you if you want to share it with your team and everybody else. And to everyone, I will get the recording out. Um, a lot of you guys asked, where can you get the recording for these? Um, if you, Danny, so my, my amazing friend and um, leader, Danny, does all my recording. So I think if you just go to her um, YouTube and type in Danny, is it Danny? <laughs> yeah, it's Danny. If you type in, I have, I have Danny two, again. I have two uh, like playlists or whatever they're called, folders, and one's leadership dooms. So that's the one that's for every Tuesday, and then I have another one for the dream team, and that's Thursday nights. Okay, awesome. So if you guys want the leadership zooms, that's every Tuesday. Go to um, Danny Get D A N I G E T T. Just search that on Facebook, and you'll see them all. You'll be able to get them all there. Um, and I think I've literally almost I, I want to say I've interviewed over the last couple years over eighty some different two hundred Ks. You guys, so. There is a lot of different Zooms to choose from. <laughs> and they're all just as amazing as today's was. Um, again, Leanne, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. And thank all of you guys. Yes, thank you guys for getting on today and pouring into yourselves and getting a little um, train on, self-development on every Tuesday. Same time, you guys, same link. So if you want to save this link and set your alarm in your phone, um, doesn't matter if you're on my team or not. We put this out to everybody. You are more than welcome to listen in every single Tuesday or catch the recordings. Um, thank you guys so much. Happy payday. And you guys, I can't wait. Two more days until we change the world. Well, my world will be changed when I order five boxes. <laughs> when I order five bottles of treat meal so I can uh, eat all of the stuff, all of the things. When I ate my big Sunday last night, I was thinking, man, I wish I had that treat meal right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm stocking up, you guys. Get your waiting list. What, you know, you guys, right now, I have put in my stories and on my Facebook page about, look, this is coming. Do you want on my, you know, I'll get to you first list, my VIP list. I'm gonna pick a couple free product testers or I'm gonna do a seven day sample. You guys, People want to be on your list. Put it out there. I love you guys. Happy Tuesday. Happy payday. Thanks again, Leanne. Thank you to all of you. We'll see you next week.